Let's be real. Which one do you want to carry around all day? If you want your videos to be a little less shaky, a gimbal can be a great tool for stabilization. Now, while a setup like this one is great for controlled situations or a heavy rig like this, it's definitely not something that you want to carry around all day with you. That's where the Zion Crane M2 comes to play. It's a tiny gimbal for the tiny cameras that you have. This can be your phone, an action camera, small point and shoots like this one, and even some small mirrorless cameras like the A6000 series or the Canon M50. Now, I've got a lot that I want to tell you about this, but before we talk too much, let's see what this can actually do. There's a ton that you can hide when you're editing, so let's just jump straight into some raw comparison tests. First up, we've got just the RX100 on its own, hand holding it with steady shot set to standard. Now, I'm just walking backwards simply, and as you can see, the footage just, just isn't usable. You can see every single step that I take, and it's really shaky. It'd be really hard to use this in an actual edit. So, as I mentioned, that was with steady shot set to standard, but most cameras have varying degrees of stabilization that you can apply in the body itself. On Sony cameras, this is referred to as active and intelligent active. But it's important to note that these modes aren't available in all resolutions depending on what model camera you have. For example, with the new Mark 7 version of this camera, they just introduced active steady shot in 4K. But since this is the Mark 5, it didn't have that. So for this next test, we're going to actually apply intelligent active steady shot, but shooting in 1080p. So right away, you can tell it's quite a bit smoother, actually. I was actually pretty impressed with what it could do but you're still seeing some of those micro jitters every time I take a step, which is going to be a little bit hard to deal with in post, especially since this is already in 1080. Finally, let's take a look at what this setup can do with the M2. So right away you can tell that it's a lot smoother. All those little micro jitters we were talking about, they're all gone now. Now I do still see a little bit of that wobble from the up and down motion, just because this is a pretty light setup, but overall I definitely would use this in an edit if I needed to. If you want to see more raw footage from this setup, I've actually got a, about a four minute video of me just walking down the street with this, completely uninterrupted, unedited, so you can see exactly how this performs. And in that video, I actually go through all the different modes that are on this gimbal, but we can touch on them briefly here. So first up, you've got selfie mode, of course, and all you have to do is triple tap the trigger here, and it's going to spin right into selfie mode. And this is great for if you're like an aspiring vlogger, or even if you're just trying to just capture your life for your own sake. This is great to have those talking shots. Next up, we've got the pan follow mode. Now in this mode, the camera will only follow your side to side motion and won't follow your up and down motion. I like this for a variety of shots, including the super low angle shots like this one. After that, we've got regular follow mode. Wherever you point it is where the camera is gonna go. So this is great for just looking around your scene. Then we've got locked mode. In my raw video, I showed this dumb example of running around the camera and it staying in place, which shows what the camera is doing, but a more practical use that I found for it is getting those shots that feel like you're kind of on a slider. After that, there's something called POV mode. Most of the time on gimbals, the point is to keep the horizon level, but sometimes you want to get a little creative and this is what this mode allows you to do. I think of this kind of like a paper airplane mode. The next two modes are kind of in a hidden menu that you have to double click on the mode button to access. The first is the go mode, which basically lets you whip the camera around quicker so you can track a subject that's moving quickly. And the last mode is vortex mode, which I'm sure you've all seen by now, kind of the Instagram banger mode. So you know what this is and now you know what it does, but maybe some of you are wondering, what do I actually think about this? Somebody who's actually holding this product and has used it for a little while. Well, to give you that, I want to split my opinion into four different sections. First up, we're going to talk about the things that I love about this, then we'll talk about changes that I would make to this, then follow that up with some ideas that it gave me, and finally some questions that I still have left for Zion. Let's start off with the things that I love about the M2. 
First off, I can't emphasize enough how much I love the size of this thing. And at first, I thought it was gonna be mainly to do with the portability, like how easy it is to throw this into a backpack or how it doesn't really add much weight to the stuff you have to carry around in a day. But really, it's actually the creativity that it allows me to have with the gimbal movements because it's so small, you can just throw it around and it's really easy to execute shots on this that would be a lot harder to do on a bigger gimbal setup. Another thing that I really appreciate about this is the actual structural design that went into making this M2. For example, it's really simple to lock this thing down so that you can just store it in a backpack if you're on the go. Then when you're ready to set it back up again, they made it super simple because they have this little memory switch up at the top here. So all you have to do is unscrew it here, slide it out like that, boom, and then you're back into being balanced again. It's a really good design if you're on the run and you just want to whip out the gimbal real quick. Another little detail that I threw in there was this little USB port that's right on the gimbal. This allows you to use a micro USB to micro USB cable to power your camera. And if you ever used an RX100 before, you know the batteries die on this thing like super quick because they're so tiny. So this really adds a lot of functionality so you don't have to take it off the plate, replace the battery, and then get it all set up again. You can just power it straight from the gimbal. And finally, one more detail that I really appreciate is this little tripod mount thing on the side here that allows you to add more expansion to this. So, for example, if you wanted to add a microphone, you can do that just on the side here without adding any extra weight to the top of this, especially if you're running something that's close to the weight limit, like a A6400, for example. They really did a great job of making sure that this was as usable as possible and thought about the end user and what we might need in our day-to-day -day use. So now let's talk about some changes and I've actually got a pretty big one. If you've been watching carefully, you might have noticed that the little joystick that comes with this that's supposed to control the gimbal is actually gone. It's missing completely because it fell off within two days of me using it. And I know this isn't just a mistake on this specific unit because I've seen other reviewers mention this as well. It just simply comes right off. There's nothing that's fully attaching it to the gimbal itself. And so I would definitely consider changing that. For example, with the DJI products, if you're familiar with them, you know that their little joysticks are removable as well, but they do it with this little screen mechanism, right? So this allows you to have it nice and flat if you want to pack it away. But then look, I mean, I can literally hold it from there. I'm not worried about it falling off. So I would definitely consider changing that on this gimbal. Now another change that I would make is to actually give this a removable battery. Now this isn't to say that the battery life is bad on this, I think it gets up to 7 or 8 hours, but the thing is once you start adding in some attachments like this one and powering up your camera, of course it's going to drop. So the thing with batteries that aren't removable is once they're dead, they're dead. You gotta wait and charge them back up again. Now with something like this size, it does have a saving grace that you can just throw it in a backpack with a portable power bank and power it up that way while you're walking around, but it would just be better to have a couple extra batteries that you can throw in here that's gonna power up your gimbal, power up your camera. You never have to worry about running out of battery and ending your shooting day. So now let's talk about some ideas that came to mind while I was using this. So one of the Easter egg features that I discovered is that if you tilt it to the side like this, it seems to snap right into like this portrait mode video type setup, which I haven't seen officially supported in any of the documentation, but it seems to work except for one thing that it won't actually let me do the tilt motion in this orientation. For whatever reason, none of the modes allow me to look up and down, which is a little bit limiting. So I wish that they would just add full support for this portrait mode because check this out. You got the mini tripod that comes with it, the little tripod holder thing that they have on the side here. You screw that in there like that. And then all of a sudden you got a perfect vertical video, super lightweight setup that you can use for all your IG or TikTok content. Another idea I had actually has to do with the way that you carry this thing. So like I mentioned, it's so easy to lock this thing down that you really do want to just throw it in a backpack. So instead of having the carrying case that comes with it, and I'll show it to you here, this is what you get when it's shipped to you, which is kind of what we're used to with gimbals, that kind of like hard uh, styrofoam case that they all tend to come in these days. And this is great if you want to ship it or throw it around or you have to go like a long way with it. But the thing is the chances of me or a lot of people really folding down this gimbal and actually fitting it back in here are pretty much slim to none. Most of the people are just gonna wanna throw it in their backpack. So maybe instead of including like this nifty little wrist strap that they gave, uh, included in the packaging, maybe they can include something like a pouch. So you take your gimbal and you're able to, maybe even with a camera attached still, that would be dope for my uses, drop it in the bag and then you got like a little drawstring that you put in the top and then that way when you throw it in your backpack, it's not banging around with all the other gear in there. It gives you a little bit of scratch resistance. So now let's move on to the questions that I have and actually I only have one and it's more of like a plea which would be to include this micro USB to micro USB cable that I have right here. 
I mean, I was looking in Italy and London and Paris and I couldn't find this thing in any of the camera stores that I stopped into. So it would be great if this little micro USB to micro USB cable came in the packaging because it's something that I had to, to special order in, which I think most people are going to have to as well. And like I mentioned, it really adds a lot of functionality to this thing. So it would be great if this was actually included in the original packaging. So yeah, that's really all I've got in the M2 today. I hope that answers some questions for you. Overall, I would definitely recommend it for people with small cameras, especially something like the RX100 or even some of those mirrorless cameras with the smaller lenses on them because this gimbal is so tiny, it's so thin that you can fit it into a backpack easily and just keep it on you all day long. So not every shot that you get is going to need the gimbal, right? We all know that. But the thing is, you can whip this thing out of your backpack when you need it, throw it back in the backpack when you don't need it, and you don't even have to really think about the weight, like carrying around something heavy like this all day, because it's just so light, easy to use. So definitely recommend it for people with small cameras. Now, as I mentioned, I do have that four minute video also on my channel, so I'm gonna link to that, so you can check that out if you wanna see some more raw footage from this specific setup. Also, in the description, check out some links from some other creators who made some videos that helped me decide whether or not I should buy this thing. For example, there's some videos with some heavier setups so you can see if it will meet specifically what you're trying to do with it. So props to those creators and definitely check them out as well. Uh, other than that, yeah, don't forget to like, like and subscribe and all that stuff. But yeah, catch you next time. Later.